Hello, everybody. Good. I'm assuming the Anjali means that you hear me. <laughs> Good. Hello. Good. Hello. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good. It's always morning somewhere. <laughs> Good. Okay. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so today, today we'll be uh, doing our little meta as usual for about half an hour and then I will be reading and talking about the Kesamuti Sutta which is known in the West as the Kalama Sutta. It's quite a popular discourse in the West especially because it talks about knowing things and accepting things only when you experience them uh, and only when you know for yourself uh, that these things are wholesome or unwholesome. And it's quite a wonderful sutta. And so I'll be speaking a little bit about that. And so, I have nothing more to say now, so we can <laughs> simply relax and take a comfortable position. If you're holding any tension in your body, whether it's in your shoulders, or your arms, your face, maybe your cheeks. Except your smile muscles. Let go of any tension. Let go of any accumulated tension. and smile. You might notice the tension doesn't dissolve all at once. It takes some time. And it's good because we have some right now. We can be glad about that and smile and relax even more. Maybe you might feel some tension around your abdomen or in your gut, perhaps. Try to let go and breathe freely.
and whenever it feels right for you, bring up this feeling of love inside your heart. This rich, tender, perhaps warm, perhaps radiant feeling of care, of goodwill. The same feeling that you might experience when you take care of a child. Perhaps a toddler that's not so familiar yet with this world. Being attentive for them being caring for them. With all the love in your heart for their happiness. And their safety. Perhaps it's a friend of yours Perhaps you are a lucky individual who can count a very virtuous friend in their life which brings very wholesome feeling of goodwill of care, of wholesome love. Some people, it works best with animals, young animals. Some people have very strong connections with animals. For them, it's very easy to tap into very deep love. Some people, it's their family. Some people might be nature. The trees. The water, the sky, the earth. And all living beings that dwell in, on, or among these elements.
all of these trees that are turning human pollution into oxygen for us to keep breathing. And they do it for free, not asking anything in return. Humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out. Carbon monoxide. And the plants, they breathe in this carbon monoxide and they breathe out oxygen. Some people feel a lot of love for the plants. Of course, for you, if it is just easy to go to beaming out, shining out the love in all directions, you can also do that. That is where we are going, but sometimes. We need to kindle a little bit of this wonderful feeling with some recollections or thoughts, ideas to feed love within us. and to cultivate it. Remember that whatever recollection or object you are using, 
as long as it is wholesome it doesn't really matter what matters is that you truly feel the feeling of love and this is very important That is where all the goodness is. And smile. And if it feels right for you, you can simply allow this feeling of love to be fully open and to radiate, to shine, to bloom. in all directions like the petals on a blooming lotus We can't force the petals to open, we just make a mess. But we can feed it from the inside and allow it to unfold on its own. If you notice any tension that's building up perhaps from 
trying too hard or trying to push the metta just calm down relax smile Let go of all of your expectations of how this should be or how it should feel like. Just love. You can't think the love. You can only feel it. as the mind and the body gain some ease, some steadiness, some calm, you might start experiencing what the Buddha called samadhi. awareness that is starting to become unified to gather to pool in the mind the water of awareness is not leaking out to all of these things of the senses in the world and now it is simply happy, fully blooming love here. Inside. Sukino chitang samadhi And the happy mind becomes collected. Notice how when the mind starts grasping or sticking to one particular idea, 
a distraction, whatever it is. And it starts to engage with it. Now the water of awareness starts leaking out towards that distraction, that particular thought. Or maybe it's an opinion, maybe it's a memory, maybe it's an event. Does it matter? As soon as the mind starts flowing towards that, Notice how there is little tension arising right there. And just as soon as you notice this tension, or as soon as you notice little distraction, moving away from the love, relax, let go. Come back to the love with a smile.
Sabhe Satha, Sabhe Panna, Sabhe Bhuta, Sabhe Pukala. Sabhe Atabhava Pariyapanna. Sabhe Itiyo Sabhe Purisa. Sabhe Ariya Sabhe Anariya. Sabhe Deva Sabhe Manusa Sabhe Vinipatika. Awera huntu sabya paja huntu. Aniga huntu sukhiyatanang pariharantu. Dukha muchantu yatalada sambatito. Mawi gachantu kamasaka. Purati maya disaya pachi maya disaya. Uttaraya nudisaya dakinaya disaya. Purati maya nudisaya pachi maya nudisaya. Uttaraya nudisaya dakinaya nudisaya. Sabe satha, sabe panna, sabe bhuta, sabe pugala. Sabe atambhava pariyapanna. Sabe itiyo, sabe purisa. Sabe ariya, sabe anariya. Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Vinipatika Awe Rahundu Abhya Peja Huntu Aniga Huntu Sukhiyatanang Pariyarantu Dukha Muchantu Yathalara Sampatito Maui Gachantu Kamasaka Nimaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya buddhang pujemi. Nimaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya dhammam pujemi. Nimaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya sanghang pujemi. Adhai maya pati padaya jati jara bhyadi maranang ha parimuchi sami. Irang te punyang asawa ka yang waham hotu. Irang te punyang nibana sa pachayo hotu. Nama punya bagang sabasatanang bajimi. Te sabbe me samang punya bagang labantu sad sad. So at your own pace, you can simply continue to relax and direct your mind, your beautiful mind now that has been cleansed with boundless love, that is aware, pliant, malleable, wieldy, straight and unwavering to use the Buddha's words and incline it to this Dhamma Desana, this discourse on the Dhamma, to listen to the Dhamma, Dhamma Savanang. And this is the famous Kalama Sutta or also known as Kesamutti Sutta. The discourse of the Buddha to the Kalamas. And this is a very wonderful discourse in so many ways. And it really gives 
clarity of insight into the unshakable truth of the Dhamma, the teaching of the Buddha, which was which is still completely rooted, founded, based upon truth and the truth that is very visible and only we need to see and understand in a certain way. And this unshakable truth of the Buddha's teaching is very well represented in this very sutta, where the Buddha is really drawing very clear lines of <laughs> what he means and what he teaches. And how his teaching is not about blindly believing in this or that or the things that might be passed down to us or the things that might be appealing or the things that some very famous people might say, but really to the truth of things and what things are truly wholesome and what other things are not wholesome. And the beauty of the Buddha's teaching is not only knowing this which is called wisdom, discernment between wholesome and unwholesome, this is the root of the Buddha's teaching, but also to know this and to practice in accordance with abandoning the unwholesome and cultivating wholesome states. And so here it is. So I have heard once the awakened one was touring amongst the Kosalans, together with a large following of monks, and he arrived at Kesamutti, a small village of the Kalamas. And the Kalamas of Kesamutti heard, and this is a very traditional or very common uh, st stock passage in the suttas and this is really how the Buddha was known at that time how he was known to be and how he was known to teach the monk Gotama son of the Sakyans who went forth from a Sakyan family has arrived at Kesamutti and this good rumor spreads amongst the country the teacher is a Narahant fully awakened Buddha, endowed with righteous knowledge and righteous behavior, a blissful one, knower of the worlds, unsurpassed guide for those who seek peace, teacher of devas and humans, awakened and exalted. He teaches the Dhamma, which is beautiful in the beginning beautiful in the middle, and beautiful in the ending. In the meaning and the phrasing, he embodies and shines forth the completely perfected and utterly pure spiritual life. And it is good to see such a realized teacher in person. Then the Kalamas went to the teacher some paid loving respects and sat to the side. Some exchanged amiable words with him, then sat down. Some saluted him with hand, hands folded in Anjali Mudra, then sat down. Some announced their family name, then sat down. Some remained silent, then sat down. And see here we have all these ways that the Buddha uh, or that people came to the Buddha. It was uh, very different for all these people. When the Kalamas of Kesamutti were all sitting, they asked the Awakened One, Bhante, many spiritual teachers and practitioners come to Kesamutti. They preach and praise their own doctrines, 
and they abuse, revile, insult, and denigrate the doctrine of others. Then shortly after, some other teacher or practitioner comes in. They too preach and praise their own doctrines, and they too abuse, revile, insult, and denigrate the doctrine of others. Therefore we are confused and in doubt about which of these good teachers speaks the truth and which speaks falsehood, lying. It is right for you to doubt kalamas, normal to be perplexed. Perplexity arises to you about what should be questioned. Come, Kalamas, not by what you've heard, not by lineage, not by tradition, not because it was passed down from your ancestors, not by mere philosophical reasoning, not because, one, not because of one particular method or teaching, not by judging external appearances, not by mere pondering on views and opinions, not because something seems plausible, not because a certain teacher is respected, but rather whenever you Kalamas should know for yourselves these things are unwholesome, these things are reprehensible, these things are not recommended by the wise. These things, when fully undertaken, lead to harm and trouble. These things you should abandon. What do you think, Kalamas, when greed arises in someone? Is that for their welfare or for their harm? For their harm, Bhante. Because of greed, Kalamas, because they, ha they are overpowered and obsessed by greed, people hurt living beings, take what isn't theirs, sleep with another's wife or husband, speak deliberate lies, and encourage others to do likewise. This being so, will this not be for their harm and trouble for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas, when anger arises in someone? Is that for their welfare or for their harm? For their harm, Bhante. It is because of hate, Kalamas, because they are overpowered and obsessed by anger, that people hurt living beings, take what isn't theirs, sleep with another's wife or husband, speak deliberate lies, and encourage pe other people to do likewise. This being so, will this not lead to their harm and trouble for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas, when delusional opinions arise in someone? Is that for their welfare or for their harm? For their harm, Bhante. Because of delusional opinions, Kalamas, because they are overpowered and obsessed by delusion, people hurt living beings, take what isn't theirs, sleep with another's wife or husband, speak deliberate lies, and encourage others to do likewise. This being so, will this not be for their harm and trouble for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas? Are these things wholesome or unwholesome? Unwholesome, Bhante. Are they blameworthy or blameless? They are blameworthy, Bhante. Are they recommended by the wise or not? They are not recommended by the wise, Bhante. When these things are undertaken and practiced, do they lead to harm and trouble or not? What do you make of it? Undertaken in practice, they lead to harm and trouble, Bhante. This is how we see it. 
This is why we said, Come, Kalamas, not by what you've heard, not by lineage nor tradition, not because it was passed down from your ancestors, not by mere philosophical reasoning, not by, not because of one particular method or teaching, not by judging external appearances, not by mere pondering on views and opinions, not because something seems plausible, not because a certain teacher is respected, but rather whenever you should know for yourselves these things are unwholesome, these things are reprehensible, these things are not recommended by the wise, these things, when fully undertaken, lead to harm and trouble. These things you should abandon. This is the reason why we said this. Come, Kalamas, not by what you've heard, not by lineage nor tradition, not because it was passed down from your ancestors, not by mere philosophical reasoning, not because of one particular method or teaching, not by judging external appearances, not by mere pondering upon views and opinions, not because something seems plausible, not because a certain teacher is well respected, but rather whenever you should know for yourselves, these things are wholesome, these things are blameless, these things are recommended by the wise. These things, when fully undertaken, lead to welfare and happiness. These things you should take up, and you should live up to them. What do you think, Kalamas, when greedlessness arises in someone? Is that for their welfare or for their harm? It is for their welfare, Bhante. Because of greedlessness, Kalamas, because they are not overpowered and obsessed by greed, people do not hurt living beings. They do not take what isn't theirs. They do not sleep with another's wife or husband. They do not speak deliberate lies, and they do not encourage others to do likewise. This being so, will this not be for their welfare and happiness for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas? When angerlessness or non-anger arises in someone, is that for their welfare or for their harm? For their welfare, Bhante. Indeed, because of hatelessness, Kalamas, because they are not overpowered and obsessed by anger, People do not hurt living beings. They do not take what isn't theirs. They do not sleep with another's wife or, ch or husband. They do not speak deliberate lies, and they do not encourage others to do likewise. This being so, will this not be for their welfare and happiness for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas, when true understanding arises in someone, is that for their welfare or for their harm? For their welfare, Bhante. Indeed, it is because of true understanding, Kalamas, because they are not overpowered and obsessed by delusional ideas, that people do not hurt living beings, they do not take what isn't theirs, they do, not take, they do not sleep with another's wife or husband. They do not speak deliberate lies and they do not encourage others to do likewise. This being so, will this not be for their welfare and benefit for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas? Are these things wholesome or unwholesome? Wholesome, Bhante. Are they blameworthy or blameless? They are blameless, Bhante. Are they recommended by the wise or not? They are recommended by the wise, Bhante. When these things are undertaken in practice, do they lead to welfare and happiness or not? What do you make of it? 
Undertaken in practice, they lead to welfare and happiness, Bhante. This is how we see it. That is why we said, Come Kalamas, not by what you've heard, not by lineage or tradition, not because it was passed down to you by your ancestors, not by mere philosophical reasoning, not because of one particular method or teaching, not by judging external appearances, not by a mere pondering on views and opinions, not because something seems plausible, not because a certain teacher is respected, but rather whenever you should know for yourselves. These things are wholesome. These things are blameless. These things are recommended by the wise. These things, when fully undertaken, lead to welfare and happiness. These things you should take up, and you should live up to them. And this was one of the ways of describing the letting go of hindrances. Greed, hate, and delusion. Loba, dosa, moha. And now we take a step further and we go into bhavana, the development of further wholesome states. Then kalamas, well rid of selfishness, well rid of resentment, and completely done with confusion, fully conscious and present. The seeker of good meditates with a mind filled with love, pervading one direction, likewise a second, likewise a third, likewise a fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere, to all living beings in this boundless universe. One meditates with a heart filled with love, vast, expansive, and unbounded, without a trace of hatred and not holding any grudges. Then Kalama, well rid of selfishness, well rid of resentment, and completely done with confusion, fully conscious and present, the seeker of good meditates with a mind filled with compassion pervading one direction, likewise a second, a third, and a fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere, to all living beings in this boundless universe, one meditates with a heart filled with compassion, vast, expansive, and unbounded, without a trace of hatred, not holding any grudges. Then Kalama is well rid of selfishness, well rid of resentment, and completely done with confusion, fully conscious and present. The seeker of good meditates with a mind filled with joy, pervading one direction, likewise a second, a third, and a fourth. So above and below, around and everywhere, across, to all living beings in this boundless universe, one meditates with a heart filled with joy, vast, expansive, and unbounded, without a trace of hatred, not holding any grudge. Then Kalama is well rid of selfishness, well rid of resentment, and completely done with confusion, fully conscious and present. The seeker of good meditates with a heart filled with steady calm, pervading one direction, likewise a second, likewise a third, likewise a fourth. So above and below, around and everywhere, across, to all living beings in this boundless universe, one meditates with a heart filled with calm, vast, expansive, and unbounded, without a trace of hatred, not holding any grudge. Then Kalamas, the mind of this seeker of good, is freed from anger, freed from impatience, freed from mental hindrances, 
and it is purified. And here is the exact way that the Buddha taught the Brahma Viharas. And this is a very, very common stock sequence that keeps coming back in the suttas. And this is really how he taught it. At that moment, that person acquires four assurances here and now. If there so happens to be another world after this, or another life, and that good and bad actions bear result, then when this body will break after death, I will reappear in a pleasurable existence. This is the first assurance that one acquires. If there is no other world after this, and that good and bad actions do not bear result, I maintain myself in blameless happiness, far from anger, resentment, and trouble. This is the second assurance that one acquires. Say that wickedness comes back to one who performs it. In such a way, I do not intend harm to anyone. Not performing any harm, harmful deeds, how could trouble come to me? This is the third assurance one acquires. If wickedness does not come back to one who performs it, all the best for me since I am then pure in both respects. This is the fourth assurance that one acquires. Whether there is karma or not, whether one believes in karma or not. Then Kalamas, the mind of this seeker of good, is freed from anger, free from impatience, and freed from mental hindrances. And it is purified. These are the four assurances one acquires there and then. So it is Bhagwa, so it is Blissful One. Excellent Bhante, excellent. Just as if what had fallen over been set upright, or as what had been hidden been uncovered, or as what or as if the way was shown to someone who was lost or as if a light was shone in the dark, thinking, let those with vision see. In the same way, Bhante, the awakened one, has brought forth and elucidated the Dhamma in countless ways. Bhante, we go to the awakened one as a refuge, to the Dhamma and to the Bhikkhu Sangha. May the awakened one count us as lay followers from now on, who have gone for refuge for life. Dukkha patta chani dukkha, bhaya patta chani bhaya, soka patta chani soka, hontu sabbe pipani no, idang no punyang sabbe satta nu modantu. Sabba Sampati Siddhya Aka Satta Chabumatta Devanaga Mahitika Punyang Tanga Numoritwa Chirang Rakhantu Buddha Sasana May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share these merits that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth 
devas and nagas of mighty powers share these merits of ours. May they long protect the Buddha sasana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.